hello and thank you all for being here. Um, my name is Carrie Rancourt. I am a living donor transplant coordinator with Hartford Hospital Transplant Program. Um, we're here today for a very important cause. Uh, we're here to raise awareness about the importance of living organ donation. Um, we here at Hartford Healthcare believe really strongly in living organ donation and we're working really hard to help um, empower our patients, our potential recipients, to get out there and really work and find their potential living donor. Um, it's a challenge for people because kidney disease is very silent. It's something you can hide really easily. And we are not very comfortable typically to put that information out there that we have an illness and need help. So we're trying to change that. We're trying to help teach our patients how to ask for help. Um, so we are very proud to have developed the Living Donor Champion Program. And that is a program we offer here in the hospital to help teach people how to spread the word, um, raise awareness that we need organ donors out there, um, and to, to really help find those um, wonderful people that want to help the stranger. So these classes are, are very successful. About 90% of the people who come through them um, have somebody pick up the phone to call us and start the process. And we are now also offering them in both English and in Spanish to really try and reach everyone. It's really important that we find these potential donors because we know they're out there and they just might not have heard about it yet. Um, our wait list for deceased organ uh, transplants is only ever growing. Um, it's getting larger and larger every year while the rate of transplant is staying roughly the same. Mm -hmm. So the only way to change that is if we can find those living donors. Um, I've been working for years with potential living donors, helping to guide them through the process, helping to educate and to make sure that this is safe for them. So we're always trying to make sure that donor safety is our number one priority. Um, we will not let anybody donate if we don't think it's safe for them. So I do encourage people, if they're thinking about helping someone, to at least pick up the phone and try and get more information. Donors are never fully committed to donating at any point. Um, you know, it's always voluntary. It is at no cost to the donor. So they should never have to pay for any of their expenses or anything related to this. Um, and beyond that, in fact, Hartford Hospital supports donations so much that we have now um, put in place a policy to provide complete time off for donors while they recover at no cost to their paid time off bank, at, at no cost um, to their hours or anything like that. So our donors can, um, any employee that donates can take up to six weeks off to recover um, at no cost to them. Uh, and so um, we, we have a wonderful story here that we're highlighting today, and this is just one of many, um, but it's a great story from our Donor Champion Program about how we've taught people how to raise awareness, um, and sometimes that awareness gains a lot of attention like you're seeing today. Um, so, so it's really important that people get out there and spread their, the word that they need that kidney transplant and that it's important to find a potential living donor. Sorry about that. Um, so we do just want to talk a little bit about some, some myths that are related to both um, deceased organ transplant and living donor transplant. Um, there's a lot of false information out there, so it's really important that everybody um, think about signing up to become a deceased organ donor. Um, a lot of people think if we know that you're an organ donor, we're not going to take care of you or anything like that, and that is couldn't be further from the truth. Um, that is the most important thing whenever somebody comes into the hospital is that we're trying to, to protect them and save them. And we would only consider someone for organ donation if they, they meet certain criteria. Um, there are some, some misconceptions about living donation as well. People are always concerned that they have to be a perfect match with their potential recipient. Um, and due to advances in the kidney, um, National Kidney Registry and Kidney Exchange programs, people are, are able to actually trade kidneys now, and so we, we can help find a match for someone um, in exchange for this donor donating on their behalf. So you don't have to be a match with our potential recipient or the person you want to help. Um, you just have to be healthy enough to donate, and that's part of what we'll do the evaluation to make sure of.
Sure. So, so um, it's really wonderful to, to see a potential recipient like Austin and his mother um, really being proactive to put that information out there. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, we, we tend to keep our medical information very private and we don't like to, to ask for help or admit that we need help. And, and so that's part of what we're fighting to change with our potential um, transplant recipients is that you know, the only promise I can ever make someone is that if you don't ask for help, you're not going to get it. Um, so to, to see people taking this message to heart and doing the work to, to get creative, take out a billboard if you have to, to, to put that information out there, um, it's really, really empowering to us to see our patients empowered and it keeps us wanting to do more and more of this wonderful work. Um, so, so thank you again for, for being here. And, and now I'd like to introduce uh, Mary to come in and share her story. And, and again, remind you why it's so important that we have these donors. Thanks so much, Carrie. Hi, and thanks so much uh, for allowing me to tell you a little bit about my family. Um, our story, story began when Austin was still in utero. We learned that he was going to only be born with one kidney, but many people live very long and healthy lives with only one kidney, and we were very hopeful that that would be Austin's situation as well. Unfortunately, when he was about six years old, uh, he started to present with some symptoms, and after some extensive testing, we learned that unfortunately, he did have chronic renal disease and that it was likely at some point that he was going to require a transplant. About two years, uh, the next year, um, my husband was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And so that led us on a two year journey, uh, working very hard to learn everything that we could about pancreatic cancer and trying desperately to save his life. Unfortunately, in January of 2005, he lost that battle, and the boys lost their dad when they were just seven and nine. And then a few years later, well, we learned that my younger son, Joshua, had some structural issues with his kidneys as well, uh, which ultimately led to the loss of one kidney and uh, significant damage to the other kidney. So he required major surgery to remove uh, the damaged organ to work to repair his remaining kidney. That was very difficult for our family. Uh, my boys have always been incredibly close. I think a part of that closeness comes from the challenges that they have faced. And my younger son had consistently told Austin that he had to remain healthy enough uh, until Josh turned 18 so he could be his donor. So to lose that possibility was, was difficult for all of us. And then in 2014, I was uh, in a car accident and received some damage to my kidneys as well. I knew that uh, there was some damage, but I wasn't sure how extensive it was. Austin uh, was placed on the active transplant list uh, last July, July of 2019. And following that, I underwent the ex testing to determine whether or not I could be considered for a living donor for my son. And unfortunately, I received the news that my kidneys are too damaged to allow me to do that. So we are seeking a living donor. Uh, we're looking for someone to be a partner with Austin during this transplant journey. Uh, certainly, our family has faced some challenges, but we also uh, have had incredible blessings. And some of those blessings include uh, meeting incredible people, such as those here at Hartford Hospital, the Transplant Center, and in particular, the Living Donor Champion Program. They really helped us to understand the importance of speaking about the needs that you have and being open about the challenges that you face. And one of the things we learned was that you have to be creative in figuring out how to tell your story and how to ask for that help. And we decided we would go big. And so we sought a billboard. And another one of the blessings that we've had along this journey is the incredible generosity of people, both their spirit and their resources. And Lamar Advertising was very generous in their resources with us. And so we have billboards across the state. And that has generated some response, which we're very excited about. Um, but I also just want to say that my boys have consistently given back. They're Eagle Scouts, they're firefighter certified. Austin is a volunteer firefighter. At age 14, he joined the department and would go to calls on his bicycle. He 
is someone who who wants to give back to his community. And we are just hopeful that we will find someone who wants to partner with him in this journey and that we can find that living donor to help him continue to live and continue to give back. Thank you.